the relationship between um, standard free energy and free energy has been derived uh, in this, this equation here, which allows us to determine free energy not at equilibrium and not at standard states. So the free energy is equal to standard free energy plus RT log Q. Q is the reaction quotient as a sample of our equilibrium constant, but not necessarily at equilibrium. So our free energy is telling us whether something is spontaneous or not, whether we are before or after the equilibrium point. And the standard free energy is telling us where the equilibrium point is, whether it's far toward the products or far toward the reactants or somewhere in between. So we're first going to um, play with it at the equilibrium and then we'll use the full equation. So at the equilibrium, our free energy is zero and the reaction quotient is equal to the equilibrium constant. So we put that up here, zero and K, we get that our standard free energy is equal to minus RT times the log of the equ equilibrium constant. And the R in this case is going to be the 8.3145 joules per mole Kelvin. This is the ideal gas law constant, but we need it in terms of energy or SI units. And uh, we can use either form in terms of joules or in terms of kilojoules. <clears throat> the inverse of this relationship is that the equilibrium constant is equal to E raised to the negative delta G naught over RT. So let's play with this first. Um, so we're going to start with the equilibrium constant and calculate our delta G naught. So for this reaction, we have an equilibrium constant of a 0.25 at 1100 Kelvin. So we can calculate our delta G naught minus RT log of K. And um, delta G's are generally going to be in kilojoules. So I'm using the kilojoules form of the gas constant here. And we end up with a positive 12.7 kilojoules. So a positive delta G naught means that our equilibrium constant is less than one. So another um, reaction here, uh, acid dissociation reaction. We're given our delta G naught at 25 Celsius and asking what our Ka is. <clears throat> so K is e to the minus delta G naught over RT. So in this case, I'm making the delta G into joules to match the uh, joules equal, uh, gas constant. Uh, delta G naught over RT uh, is uh, minus 22.6. E raised to that power gives a K of 1.59 times e minus 10. So we have a positive delta G naught. We have a very small equilibrium constant. So now let's look at the full equation here, how we can calculate our delta G at uh, random concentrations. So for this reaction of turning nitrogen and hydrogen into ammonia, we have our pressures, uh, 200 atmospheres for nitrogen, 600 for hydrogen, 200 for ammonia. We're given our delta H and delta S for that reaction. We're looking for what the delta G is at 298. Well, we have our delta H naught, delta S naught. So our first step is to calculate our delta G naught, uh, which is delta H naught minus T delta S naught. We put in our numbers, making sure our units are matching. And we end up with our delta G naught of a minus 3.27 times 10 to the fourth. So, the next part that we're going to need is our Q up here. So we calculate our Q, write our equilibrium expression of our um, ammonia squared over the nitrogen times the hydrogen cubed using the uh, coefficients from the balance equation. We put in the pressures, run it through our calculator, and we get 9.26 times 10 minus 7 for our Q. Now we're ready to calculate our delta G. Uh, which is delta G naught plus RT log Q. So we put in our numbers and we 
start to reduce them down. And uh, we end up with a minus 6.71 times 10 to the fourth joules. That's the minus 67.1 kilojoules. So the delta G not up here being negative means that the equilibrium constant lies to the right, uh, lies to the products, and our delta G being negative shows that we have not yet reached that equilibrium, so we're going to go forward uh, in that direction. So this doesn't tell us anything about how fast it'll go forward, but it'll go forward uh, if possible uh, toward that equilibrium position. So let's do one more problem here. So we've got uh, nitric oxide reacting with ozone to form nitrogen dioxide and oxygen gas. So we have a, a set of pressures at uh, 298 Kelvin, and we're given our standard free energy of formation for each of the reactants and products. We're wanting to know what our free energy is, delta G. So we want to calculate our delta G naught. That'll be our um, free energy of formation of products minus reactants all times their coefficients. In this case, all the coefficients are one, so it's the products added together, subtracting off the reactants, and we end up with the minus 198 kilojoules for our delta G naught. So we know our equilibrium position, our constant, lies toward the products. <clears throat> we need our reaction quotient next, so we do our products over our reactants, but then the pressures that we have, and we get a reaction quotient of 50. Then we calculate our delta G, which is delta G naught plus RT log K. We put in all our numbers and we reduce them down. We end up with a minus 188 kilojoules. So our equilibrium constant lies far to the right toward the products, but we have not yet gotten there. So we're going to move toward the products to approach our equilibrium position. 